Hi everybody, it's Jalessa again. Today I'm gonna to show you how to take this piece of copper and turn it into a signet ring. So let's get started. There's two things I'd like to tell you before we get started with this project. Number one, this is not a beginner project, but if you are a beginner, I highly recommend you trying to do this project because the more often you do it, the more familiar you'll get with all of the steps that you need to do in order to finish it. And also it, it ups your skill set. The second thing I'd like to say is that I decided to do this in copper because copper is a little more forgiving than silver. You can raise the temperature up high enough to get all of the solder to melt without worrying about the actual piece melting. So let's go ahead and get started with this and I'll see you in the next clip. Before we get to making your templates, I wanted to kind of share with you a couple of things and a reasons why we're doing what we do. So the first thing is, this ring is made of 61 millimeters and I'm going to explain that you need to have a 61 millimeter template as well as a 65 millimeter template. And the reason for that is when you put the two together, let's say these two are the exact same 61 millimeters. When we put these two together, like we're going to solder them, we don't have much room for error here it's going to be fairly similar to doing this in the round, but we need to have an extra little bit on the top in order to create the hollow box. So when you take that out and you put the 65 millimeter template on it, you've got a lot of extra room there to actually play with and cut down and you don't have to worry about it being too short or that maybe your soldering isn't exactly straight you want to make sure that you have at least four millimeters of extra room to play with. So I'm going to go ahead and start making the templates and you'll see how I do that. So in order to determine the correct size for your patterns, the first thing you need to do is measure the thickness of your metal. Um, mine is a 20 gauge so that makes it a 0.8 millimeter thickness and I also want to make a size 8 ring and with the calculation that comes out to about 61 millimeters. So the first thing I want to do is make the pattern for the 61 millimeter portion of the ring and that will be the inner diameter. That's where the size is going to come from. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my 6 millimeter, 61 millimeter, sorry, length. And the width on mine, I'm not going to make it a tapered one this time. Um, I think it's important to find the straight sides first. So I'm making mine rectangular and I'm making it a 10 millimeter width. That's a typical width on a men's signet ring, at least at the top. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and continue to make this 61 millimeter template. Now, for the outer ring, you want the template to be at least 61 millimeters, obviously, right? Because that's the width or the length of the ring like, that you need to make. But in this case, you need the edges to stick up a little bit taller than the actual ring itself so that you can make a hollow form ring. So the standard rule is about four to five millimeters longer than your ring blank for the inner diameter. So I'm gonna make this 65 or centimeters, 65 millimeters long. And I'm gonna do it up close here. So 65 and 61, that gives me an extra four millimeters to work with. It's also going to be 10 millimeters wide. We'll get to a tapered ring in another episode. So I've got 61 millimeters here. And then 65 millimeters on the outer. This one's the inner and this is the outer. So the first things you're going to need are your Elmer's glue or some kind of a glue stick, the pattern that you created and your annealed copper. We're gonna go ahead and glue the pattern to the copper and then cut it out.
Okay, so right now we're not going to worry about the edges out here, whether or not they're straight and perfect, because we can clean those up after we've already assembled the ring. What's more important on the shorter piece, this is the longer piece. This is going to be the outer ring and this is going to be the inner ring. Since we need to solder this in the round, we need to straighten up our edges on the um, both sides so that when we straighten it on the round, we've got a good clean joint. Okay, so we're going to test the joint. I'm going to take my half round pliers and create a D shape for soldering. And I can see my joint isn't perfectly aligned, so what I need to do is run my saw blade through it to straighten it out. Uh, actually, I take that back. Let's line this up. The more time you spend cleaning your joint now, the better, or aligning your joint, I should say, because it'll be less cleanup for you after the soldering is done. I think that's going to do it. So the next thing you want to do is true your ring up on the ring mandrel. This is, remember now, this is the inner ring. Okay, so now that the ring is trued, I'm going to take my file and file off my edges so that the ring is even. Now I'm going to go to my sandpaper. Now I'm not going to spend too much time doing this because this is going to be the inner ring and we can adjust any of the widths um, on the ring once we get the outer ring soldered to it. But I will do enough so that I don't have any large gaps in the middle. I'm also going to make sure that my ring is not pillowed out, meaning it's wider on the outsides than it is on the inside. Okay, so you'll notice here I've got a lot of solder, excess solder on the outside of the band. I'm not going to worry too much about filing that off right now because I may need some of that solder when I solder the outer ring to the band. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that alone for now because I don't want to lose any excess solder that I can actually use without having to put too much more solder on it. So we're going to go, go ahead and leave that just the way it is for right now. Okay, so we got this cleaned up. We got the excess solder we're left here. Now we're going to take the outer band, which is a little bit longer by about four to five millimeters, and we're going to wrap it around the inner band so we can see just how high our signet part is going to be. So what I like to do is just set them up against each other, bend it with my fingers, get a match, and then slightly bend it a little bit more with my fingers and then give it kind of a friction fit. Now, it's still not going to match right here. I gotta keep working with it and fiddle with it just a little bit. Um, one of the things you wanna keep in mind too is that solder joint. You don't want it at the top where you're gonna be soldering everything. So try and keep that solder joint toward the bottom, which is what we were talking about earlier and why I didn't wanna get rid of that excess solder. Because that excess solder is gonna help me keep this in place um, and help me solder it some more down in this area. So the next thing I want to do is take some binding wire and wrap it around the entire ring. To hold it tight, that way when I'm soldering it, I don't have any gaps. So I'm going to cut myself a piece of binding wire. This is my binding wire. It's probably about 20 years old and I've been using it over and over and over again. Um, it was my husband's dad, so my father-in-law's uh, binding wire he kept in his toolbox. So we're going to go ahead and wrap this around. And for now, just loosely tighten it. with our fingers. Then I'm going to take a pair of flat nose pliers and tighten it again. Now I don't want this so tight that it's, you know, squishing my metals together. I just want it enough so that my gaps are not I don't have any large gaps in the middle on here. You can see I kind of do. So what I'm going to try and do is fix that with my ring mandrel. There we go. Okay, so my gaps are fixed. I'm going to continue to tighten this. And I think that's good. So I'll trim off the excess wire and bring it over to my soldering block so I can solder it. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is flex the joint. So I use Battern self-pickling flux. Whatever flux you use is perfectly fine. And we're going to do one side at a time. Let's we'll start with this side. I'm going to place my solder. Now I'm using hard solder once again because I have the joints kind of pulled together with the binding wire so I don't have to worry about them coming apart. And what I'm doing is placing my solder right on the edge where it's touching both pieces. Oops, that one fell. Oop, fell again. It's a nice little balancing act we have to do here, but. Now remember when you're soldering, the solder is going to flow to where all of your heat is. So one of the things to keep in mind is to keep your solder or your heat in the area you want the solder to flow. Since this is copper, I want my flame to be pretty hot. 
it's forgiving. So I'm going to turn my heat up as best I can to keep the heat even. And I'm actually heating it from the outside so that the solder doesn't bounce all over the place while my flux is getting hot. Okay, now I can start heating the whole piece. I'm trying to be careful to heat both pieces at the same time. That way when the solder does flow, it's going to flow down in between the two. There it goes. Now you may have to do this in a couple of operations. Um, I can see that it flowed pretty well on one section, but not in the other. So I'm going to flip it over and flux it again. I'm going to place some more solder. Get my torch ready again. Get the solder pick ready. The faster you get in and get out, the better. Especially if you're working with silver. Okay, so round one is done. We're gonna go ahead and pickle this, quench it and pickle it. Quench it, take the wire off of it, and then pickle it. And then I'll take a look at the joint. We'll round it out some more if we need to, and then go for a second round. Don't think that you have to do everything in one round of soldering. That's a misnomer. Nobody's that perfect. There's always gonna be multiple rounds of solder, so don't feel bad if you have to do soldering more than one time to, in order to get the joint to close. That's not gonna hurt it, or it's not gonna make your metal smithing journey any different. You'll just know that as you get better, the likelihood of having to do that as often will start to diminish. In today's video, we started the process of turning this piece of copper into a signet ring. Part two will be coming shortly, so take a look at this link here. If you like this video so far, give me a thumbs up, leave me some comments below, and subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more videos like this. So I'll see you next time in part two. Bye.